stated previously, we provided a link to our open data page on our website at portlandpolice.com on page 24 of the report, which gives users the opportunity to look at all crime statistics and refine them to their own neighborhood or specific geographical areas. In the report, we also included our significant progress on the DOJ settlement agreement and the numerous policies that will be a specific challenge that we faced was that our policy development team spent a large part of the year conducting the DOJ requirement of an initial review six months after DOJ-related directives had been enacted. Therefore, that limited the team's ability to address other policies. It is hoped now that they can turn toward the 100 directives that need addressing. It should be noted that the six-month review schedule changes to annually now which will help the team's ability to work on additional directives. We also continue to still be challenged in meeting our 180-day timeline for the completion of internal affairs investigations. We recognize the procedural justice implications inherent in these delays and the toll it takes on all of those involved. And we continue to work to reduce this timeline. And I'm actually um, optimistic that that has since been resolved or will be resolved. Also last year, we had six officer-involved shootings. We understand the use of deadly force impacted our efforts to build and maintain trust in the community. We will continue to focus on our robust review process, communication, training, and policies to further improve trust and legitimacy in our communities. In regards to staffing and our personnel, Staffing remained our biggest significant issue, with each division citing it as a challenge. That, combined with special events, planned or unplanned, greatly impacted and affected our personnel. For example, during some of these events, there was a delay in responding to priority one emergency calls. Because responding to emergency calls for service is the number one priority, specialty units, like the traffic division, continue to provide rotational support 25% of the time. This impacts their ability to address their workload in their respective divisions. As we continue to hire and train new officers, we know staffing issues are going to remain for some time. And because of that, we realize the Bureau has to be far more innovative and embrace technology to use our resources most effectively and efficiently. As an example, the Bureau implemented the beginning of a more collaborative policing model where divisions come together to combine resources to focus on significant crimes and livability issues. The gun violence reduction team is an example of this. Also, PPB made great strides in data-driven policing, rolling out Tableau software to assist precinct and division leadership in fulfilling my request to use data to inform resource development. As it relates to recruitment and hiring, the Bureau continued to be challenged with the length of time it took to process applications. However, to address this, Bureau personnel spent considerable time reviewing our hiring processes to look for efficiencies and enhancements. This included incorporating new technology, implementing timelines for various stages, and evaluating factors that can reduce this timeline without sacrificing the integrity of the system. Another challenge remains uh, in recruiting diversity for the PPP, and it's also a priority. We began to look at our recruitment and hiring efforts through an equity lens to better understand any barriers for hiring diverse candidates. Also along the lines of equity, the Bureau continued with our implicit bias training, which every sworn member of the Bureau, we implemented procedural justice training, which is now, I'm proud to say, incorporated into every aspect of the Bureau's policies and training. And finally, the Bureau embarked on the strategic planning process, which will focus PPB's direction for five years. <coughs> the many public forums and listening sessions provided great feedback and insight. We participated in numerous events, as well as hosting open houses at each precinct and the traffic division. We also created new barbershop and salon forums to better engage the community in smaller groups to have productive discussions and receive feedback. We're also keeping better track of these activities through our new community engagement app that officers use. All of this is just a snapshot of what's in the report, but once again, I want to thank everyone who was involved who had input in this particular document. Shall I go on 
to the community engagement plan. Are there any uh, questions so far about the annual report? I'm sure. 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 It means it's a subset within the division itself. So no, not necessarily. They may work together, but it's not a subset specifically of the GPRC. So, thank you. So one of the questions I asked you when you were in my office was my concern that I can no longer track now whether or not uh, the same people are being targeted for gun violence reduction that were being targeted for gang enforcement. <laughs> Um, I've noticed in your annual report that there are places that you talk about gang activity, yet uh, because of the new way that you're counting, I can't hold you accountable for what you told me last year about the gang enforcement unit. How are, internally are you tracking that data to determine that these now gun violence reduction officers, which there's 24, 26, something like that, uh, are these officers doing the exact same thing they were doing when they were part of the gang enforcement unit? And if they're not, what is the difference between what the gun violence reduction team does and what the gang enforcement team used to do? So uh, when you and I talked, I think, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're talking about or asking how are we going to continue to track stop data? Uh, yes, and, and how do we actually hold you accountable from one year to the next? Because when you change the name, all of a sudden we're tracking something different uh, than what we were tracking the year before. So we'll continue to track the same information. However, uh, given that we now, we send the gun violence reduction team officers to respond to additional types of calls, the types of statistics have changed. So it doesn't mean that it's going to be apples to oranges. It just means now that the GBRT with the additional types of crimes that they respond to um, are now tracking in a different way. So. We expect to have the GPRT stats, I hope all inputted by either the end of this month or early November. So then that way we can include their stop data uh, results with the rest of the reports that we have. Thank you. Uh, I also mentioned that I was surprised that in your annual report that I didn't see any mention of hate crimes uh, uh, because I could tell that Portland Police Bureau actually investigates hate crimes. Um, is there a plan to add that? And you mentioned that trafficking also was not part of this annual report. Yeah, are there so other parts that I didn't mention that also are missing and that will be part of updates? So I think, and, and for both of us, and I misspoke when I shared that. So if you go to page 14 under the investigations branch, it talks about how many um, bias crimes were investigated. It says 14 potential bias crimes were investigated, and of those, eight bias crimes were identified. So it does touch base on how many we received and accepted, but I don't know how much further detail you want. 
as it relates to that. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what that means. I mean, uh, bias crimes could cover a whole range of activity. I, I would be very interested in more demographic data around what does that mean? Who is being uh, impacted by the hate crimes in the community? And really, what hate crimes is Portland Police Bureau investigating? Because it, there seems to be a, a um, a, a conflict between what the DOJ investigates, what the state of Oregon investigates, and what Portland Police Bureau investigates, or I, I need to be clear about what's Portland Police Bureau's responsibility in that. Thank you. Thank you.